I really like Marianne Williamson. I've said this before that, you know, with time, she's kind of grown on me. At first, I was really turned off because she seemed like, you know, she was one of those new age hippies and had some beliefs that were a little bit too kooky for me. But, you know, over time, I realized that she does bring something unique and valuable to the table. I mean, just her speaking about reparations in such an eloquent and beautiful way, I think that that's really important. However, that doesn't mean that just because I like her, I'm willing to overlook the various blind spots that she has, because she takes some policy positions that I don't get. For example, at the debate, she disappointed a lot of progressives when she said this about Medicare for All. I, I, I don't know if Senator Warren said that about me specifically. I admire very much what Senator Warren has said and what Bernie has said. But I have to say, I have a, I'm normally way over there with Bernie and Elizabeth on this one. I hear the others, and I, I have some concern about that as well. And I do have concern about what the Republicans would say, and that's not just a Republican talking point. I do have concern that it will be difficult. I have concern that it will make it harder to win, and I have concern that it will make it harder to govern. Because if that's our big fight, Thank you, then the Republicans will so shut I us want to bring down in on Mayor everything Buttigieg. else. Mayor Buttigieg. Now, coming from her, that argument doesn't even make sense. Because no matter what you do, Republicans will portray you as a kooky far-left extremist. In fact, right after she made that point, Pete Buttigieg chimed in and made that same exact point that I just made. I mean, she supports reparations, which Fox News has already attacked. So why is it that certain far-left ideas that will be attacked by Republicans, you know, are something that you'd be willing to support, but with regard to Medicare for All, you just can't get on board. It just, it doesn't make sense, logically speaking, and from someone who has so passionately spoken about things that the Republican Party will obviously attack her for personally, I mean, what are you doing? Why can't you get on board with Medicare for All? However, the good news is that after that debate, she spoke with Jen Uger of TYT, and she actually expressed some openness to the idea of maybe getting on board with Medicare for All after all. When I said what I said, I felt dirty after I said it. I felt like, you know, I felt like, you know, I maybe had to, I had to say it. I, so I, the needle really moved for me on that tonight. When I, because hearing it from them, and having to say to myself, you're agreeing with John Delaney here. You're really being pulled over here. <laughs> and I could just feel, I, I felt I was going to have people like yourself, like on my text. No! I still have a little question, and I still have that little bit, Cenk, on uh, so, the insurance. Let, let's talk about that for a second, I, I, since we're already mid conversation on that. Uh, so. There is this irony that did you you score so well when you talk against corporate rule and you did it again tonight and on the issue of Medicare for all you seem like you know you're stuck on that one it feels like you're almost in mid evolution I am yeah. but that, I am I am and that that's the truth of the matter but I think the needle moved left today That's certainly a step in the right direction and I welcome anyone who is willing to have an open mind and evolve but Let's be clear here. You're running to be the president of the United States. If you don't come into power with a clear idea of what you want to do with regard to healthcare, you're going to get eaten alive, not just by Republicans, but by the healthcare industry who will lobby against you, who will tear you down. So even though I can respect your willingness to evolve, I mean, you should have fleshed out what you want to do before running for president. And it seemed like that was that, you know, she came out against Medicare for all, but then expressed willingness to change that position until, however, the CCI Action Fund released answers that candidates submitted in response to questionnaires that they sent out. And when it came to the question of Medicare for all, Marianne Williamson was one of the candidates that stated they do not support Medicare for all. And when it comes to the candidates' beliefs about the role private insurance should play, Bernie Sanders was the only presidential candidate that unequivocally stated we should eliminate private insurance. Whereas Marianne Williamson said she believed that private insurance should still exist alongside a public option. So in other words, what she supports is a healthcare system where the healthcare profiteers will inevitably push anyone who's sick onto the public plan 
and then they'll just choose to sell insurance to people who are healthy because they know that that's how they're going to make millions and probably billions in profit. It's a really great way to water down your own public option and make sure that it's underfunded and make sure that people who are on that public option plan have to buy supplemental insurance. It just it tells me that she she doesn't really understand how healthcare would work, you know, with a public option versus Medicare for all. And by giving that answer to CCI Action Fund, it tells me that she moved back to the right after previously telling Jen Uger that she was open to the idea of embracing Medicare for all. So I tweeted about this because this is what I do. If a candidate vocalizes that maybe, you know, they're not too fully on board with Medicare for all, or maybe they're starting to waver, I call them out. So I tweeted and I said, look, why would you do this? This is not harnessing love to allow these private insurance vultures to still profit off of us and rip us off. Shame on you, Marianne Williamson. And to my surprise, she actually saw that tweet and she responded saying, please tell me where you got this. It is inaccurate. To which I responded, sharing the link with her. And I said, if this is wrong and you actually do support Medicare for all, that would be fantastic news. I would love to bring you on my podcast to discuss Medicare for All. I know you told Jang Uger you were open to it after the debate. She then replied saying, correcting this right away. Thank you for letting me know. So I'll take that as a no to my invite, which is fine. My feelings aren't hurt, but she's welcome anytime to come on my program and talk about healthcare. But with that being said, let's just talk about her wishy-washiness with regard to this issue. I mean, over the course of the last couple of weeks, she came out against Medicare for All and then signaled support for it and then presumably came out against it again and is now saying, no, actually, I'm not against Medicare for All. I mean, look, this is a number one issue for a huge percentage of Americans. You need to be clear and you need to issue a clarification. Do you or do you not support Medicare for All? You have flip-flopped four times in the course of the last couple of weeks. Where do you stand, Marianne? You have to make this clear. And it's been several days now since she responded to me and on her website, she still has not fully embraced Medicare for All. In fact, it states very clearly that she supports a public option, which indicates that her responses that her campaign or she herself submitted to CCI actions seem to be correct after all. And maybe she just didn't want someone drawing attention to her response when it comes to Medicare for All because she knows that that would be unpopular. And um, look, this actually makes me mad because I reluctantly deleted the tweet after she told me that that wasn't correct, because if she had a change of heart, I would be more than happy to give her credit for it. But that doesn't actually seem to be the case. And looking at her Twitter account, the only new policy position that we learned about from her is that she promised to take down a picture of Andrew Jackson when she's elected. Okay, well, great. I'm sure that removing the picture of Andrew Jackson will drastically change the lives of millions of Americans. But where do you stand when it comes to healthcare? You see, I regret deleting that tweet because it seemed like it was actually correct and she just didn't want someone drawing attention to it. That's what it seems like. Now, I am more than willing to admit that I'm wrong. In fact, I hope she proves me wrong. But in order to do that, you actually have to give us a clarification, Marianne. You have to tell us where you stand on the issue of Medicare for All. And look, I've been doing this long enough to know that whenever a candidate expresses any indication whatsoever that they're maybe backing off of Medicare for All, that means that they don't support it anymore. They support either a watered-down version or they've moved away from it entirely. Now, look, I get that a lot of people like Marianne Williamson. I like her too, but it doesn't matter if we like a candidate. What we should prioritize is the policies of the candidates, not the candidates themselves. So if a politician backs off of Medicare for All, best believe that I will be on that politician like stank on shit, because that's what we have to do. And if Marianne Williamson doesn't like that I call her out because she's obviously being very wishy-washy on Medicare for All, flip-flopping back and forth, back and forth in a matter of weeks, then there's a simple solution to get people like me off of her back. You can do better issue a clarification, embrace Medicare for all, or don't. Either way, you need to be clear and unequivocally say whether you do or do not support Medicare for all. You can't say on your website, I support a public option, and then, you know, try to correct people when they say that you don't support Medicare for all just because you don't like that they're drawing attention to your bad policy position. You have to choose a policy 
and stick with it. Either you support Medicare for All and you get credit for it, or you don't support Medicare for All and you get called out for that. But you've got to pick a side. You have to be decisive and you need to state your position on this issue because being wishy-washy on something that's so crucial, you know, when people are dying every single year because they don't have insurance or maybe they have insurance but can't afford the uh, deductible, it's just, it's unacceptable.